change what you initially thought about fighting at welterweight? You, you just proved that you can win a welterweight fight, but yeah. you, you got to take a lot of shots because you know these guys won't go away. So yeah. does, it, does it change your opinion no, about I fighting think at he welterweight? Has a, he has a rock chin. He has a rock chin, that boy has, and he's a big boy. He's not, people can say he's a lightweight, and he was a lightweight, but he was far from a lightweight in there. I think the fact that it was five months or six months or whatever it was before our next fight was scheduled, he grew in them in them few months because he was eating naturally. He was bigger than Nick, bigger than Jake. Who had fought both of them had fought in middleweight, so he was most certainly a big boy in there, a big welterweight. I was facing in there. So, look, I'll never ch uh, shy away from a fight. I'll never shy away from a challenge. And um, if it, if it makes if it makes sense, I'll, I'll do it. No problem. But it's it's a completely different prospect fighting about 170. So, but uh, never say never. So obviously, what what's next fight? Ich träume und die Welt erzittert. press conference here in Torrance, California here with Conor McGregor and Conor, a lot of people have sat in that seat that Nate Diaz sat in today. How do you think he handled it? You said that people have shrank when they've been put in that McGregor bubble. How did Diaz respond to it? The same. The same and, and he can't, you know, I felt he shrank as well. You know, he, he maybe put it up a little bit better than many but I still feel he shrank. He kept looking to Nate. I was almost talking to Nick more than I was talking to Nate so, but whatever, this, this is nothing. The fight is March 5th, 10 days. I'm looking forward to it. And he made a pretty strong accusation ridiculous. towards you. Absolutely ridiculous. Not I'm even sure how, how, how yeah. serious we should take it, how serious no, he yeah, meant it. Yeah. What, what no, I don't think reaction? he did either. I mean, it, serious. It's, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. The most tested fighter in 2015 I was on the roster, so I am a very big against steroids. I have lambasted everyone that has been caught for steroids previous my opponent previous opponents have been caught and I butchered them for everything they were worth for taking steroids so um, and then the fact that his two teammates took steroids and were caught so uh, 
I, I pay no attention to it. It was ridiculous. Can you describe the level of disappointment that there is not another <coughs> belt sitting on the other side of that podium today? Yeah, I mean, I, this is what, you know, I could, I could see the, the picture, but again, a bruised foot is it? You don't want to fight with a bruised foot, no way. So it is what it is. What kind of injury would it take to, to keep Conor McGregor from, from a UFC fight? You know, uh, there, there are true injuries. Let's, let's get that right. There are true injuries that can, that can hamper you. And, but I don't know. I've yet, to, I've yet to find one, you know. I've yet to find one. Answer this question. Conor McGregor fights for the 100 and blank belt first. 45, 55, 70. Give an answer to that. Well, I don't know. They, they, it doesn't matter. Conor McGregor fights, and that's it. That's all, that's all you need to know. That's all I need to know. The fans need to know. And that's all the UFC executives need to know. And that's why they high-five each other every time, and as long as the, the real draw is still on the card. Well, you call yourself Mystic Mac. You've already given a prediction, first round knockout. But you go further than predictions. You describe the exact sequences that lead to them. Yeah. So what is going to happen on March 5th with Nate Diaz? He's a, he, he's a hit and pull fighter. He hits, pulls, hits, pulls, and then plods as well. Um, I, just think, I, I just think he's too predictable in, in everything he does. He's in a set pattern, and he, he neglects other disciplines, and it's hampered them. It's hampered the Diaz brothers' progression. In, 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 as a martial artist, so um, I feel his body will be ripped to shreds. It's a soft frame. Um, I feel the left uppercut will be a nice one. You know, the long range is an illusion. Um, I feel my left uppercut will ping him clean. Are you excited to test yourself against bigger guys? You know, he mentioned size over and yeah. over again at this press Let's conference. Is that something Let's you like do to do? This is this is martial arts. There is. In, in, in true warfare, weight is not an issue, so this is something I enjoy. I have fought bigger men before, so I look forward to it. We're less than two weeks away from UFC 189. Um, Jose Aldo is, is your opponent for that. And I was fascinated by your move in the news conference. I know you guys are always trying to get into the head of your opponent. Mm -hmm. in, back in March, for the news conference to promote the fight, you actually snatched his belt. You hope to do that on July 11th. But you, you, you Well, I belt. snatched... My belt. Oh, it was simply taking what was mine. He was on my home turf and he tried to lay claim that he was the king of my city. But you do not lay claim to the, being the king of my city while the king of the city is around. So <laughs> the king of the city rose up and snatched what was his, which was the gold belt, and raised it before my crowd, my yes, passionate crowd. It was. You took it back. Exactly. I took it back and raised it for my people. It was a, it was a beautiful moment. In that it was a teaser almost for what July 11 will be, where I where I raise it for real in, in beautiful Las Vegas City in front of my home crowd. Why are you so confident that you will do that? Um, I don't know. I'm in a business where you must be confident. If, we're, we're, if you have any doubts, they will they will come back and play against you. So I am supremely confident, and as well, I feel I am confident in my work ethic, my my approach to the game, my non-stop effort to get better as a martial artist. I don't feel that nobody else in the game is doing what I'm doing or is moving the way I am moving. Where's that come from, Connor? It just comes from years and years of practice on the mat, you know. I have, I have had many fights inside the octagon, outside the octagon, in rings, on mats. I, I am an experienced veteran in the fight game and through, through that and through a belief in my team and my ability, I have just gained a bulletproof confidence that cannot be stopped. Are you big on predictions? Do you usually make predictions before fights? And if so, I always, how will it end on the 11th? I always make accurate predictions. I've predicted many contests. I've predicted my entire career. And, you know, I predict the future. So for me, I have already predicted this contest. I predict four minutes of the first round, he will be KO'd. First round? Wow. Yes, I feel that the, the power matched yes. with the precision, he will not be able to take it. So four minutes. First round, he will be he will be done. And uh, where do you live? My name is Conor McGregor, and I live in Lucan. And what's your status, or what's your professional? I'm a professional MMA fighter with a record of four and one. Um, I'm an up-and-coming fighter, and without a doubt, you will see me on the UFC in the in near future.
without a doubt. Uh, how long have you been fighting? Well, I've been f I've been boxing pretty much all my life. I am. Um, I started MMA around two or three years ago, and about two years ago, I'd say, and I instantly had a knack for it, and I, I really, really, really loved it. It's like an addiction for me. It's it's all I do. I train twice a day. It's all I think about. It's just it's, it's, I don't want to do anything else. It's as simple as that. Uh, fighting as a boxing career, how how do you think that differs from any other type of career? Well. As in MMA, like how's it different from MMA? How, how does it different from, let's say, your your regular nine to five? As in, not well, obviously the, the yeah. obvious reason, yeah. but what is it? How does it differ from from your perspective? Oh, well, <laughs> um, that's a really hard question. <laughs> that's a really hard question, isn't it? Well, statistically, <laughs> how does it differ? Jesus. Well, it differs. I don't know. Like, did you ever have like what did you work as before you? Yes, I was I was a plumber. I was uh, I was an apprentice plumber. I did a year in that, and it just it just wasn't for me. You know, I, it's either it's either all or nothing in the in the, the game. I mean, you you have to if you're not if you're not training twice a day, if you're not dedicated, you, you're not going to go anywhere. So I felt I had enough talent, enough dedication, enough love for the sport. That it was time to pack up my job and chase my dream, and that, that's what I'm doing, and that's that's what that, that's pretty much it. And what, what is your dream? My dream is to be world champion, world lightweight champion in the UFC, have more money than I know what to do with, and have a great life for my my kids, my grandkids, everyone in my in my family, everyone that's that's come up with me. That's my dream. My dream is to be number one, pretty much. My goal is num number one MMA. And uh, where are you training out of, or what? Where are you fighting out of? I'm training in Straight Blast Gym in Walkinstown, uh, on the Long Mile Road there. My coach is John Cavanagh. I train with top class fighters Tom Thomas the Tank Egan, Ashton Bash Daly, Rowdy Owen Ruddy, Rob Dog Quinn. I train with all the top guys there. I also box. I just still I still compete boxing. Um, I box in Crumlin Boxing Club. It's an amateur boxing club with a pro with a pro team as such pros as Ian Thames, Stephen Armand, excellent pros. Um, I train down there as well. I train, I train there Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and then every other day, SBG honing my MMA skills. What's your favorite discipline in MMA? What do you like most about MMA? <sighs> well, I just, I just, to be honest, I love it all. It's everything. You can't, I'm not, I'm not one of these guys. I, I love me boxing. I love grappling. I love, I just, I love every last bit of it. It really. It really is the number one sport, and there's nothing out there like it. There's, I don't care what boxers or toy boxers or wrestlers or any of these type of guys say. They all know it. MMA is number one, and UFC is the top organization. It's as simple as that. It's, it's, it's the best out there. It's overtaking boxing. It's better than anything. What would it mean to you to, to live your dream of fighting the UFC? I can't, I can't, words can't even describe that. I'm training so hard. My, my game is coming along. Uh, I will, I will be where I want to be. I, I, I'm, re I'm a hundred percent confident that I, that I will make it to the top. I have the skills, I have the dedication, and it's something I really, really want. So, to f words, words can't even describe, but it will happen, and I'll let you know when it happens. With the year two thousand and eight, just about out, looking back on your your fighting career and your, your training, how has it been for you? To the start of the year was the f my, my first year full time training. I started full time training in January, I'd say, training twice a day, every day. My preparation for fights has been great. My game has come along. My ground game is unbelievable. It's from from where I was at this full full police cop out uh, outfit. Pulled me in. I was like, I'm gonna get a ticket. I'm gonna get brought to court or something. Fine. He comes up to the window and looks at me. Uh, have you got a driver's license? I says, yeah. Showed him the driver's license. He looked at the driver's license, looked at me and said, um, do you mind if I jump in the passenger seat for a selfie? <laughs> All right then. Jumps in the passenger, takes a selfie. Thanks very much, see you later. Off I went at 200, 200 <laughs> miles per hour. <laughs> like Batman. <laughs>